Greetings again, I'm John Setzler and welcome back to the Kamado Joe cooking channel. Uh, today we're going to get started on our first cook on the Kamado Joe Jr. I know a lot of people are excited about seeing this guy cook so we're going to do one of the one of the tests I think that everybody wants to see done uh, quickly. We're going to do a low and slow cook. We're going to cook a Boston butt and see how well the Joe Jr. performs on a cook like this. Uh, I know everybody wants to see how long this thing can cook on a load of charcoal, so we're going to find out. I've already run a test on the Joe Jr. just to see you know, how it behaves in that situation. I loaded it up with a full box of charcoal, and I ran it for nine hours at 250 degrees before I shut the vents down. And I'm going to show you a picture here of how much... Uh, coal I had left in the firebox after uh, that thing had shut itself down and snuffed out completely. There was a good bit of charcoal left so I believe it's going to do the job and Hemingway's looking forward to it. Uh, one of the other things I was looking at is a seven, uh, the butt that I'm going to be starting with is about seven pounds. I'll get an actual weight on it after I have it trimmed up and ready to go. We're going to start on that here in just a minute but that's a really large piece of meat for a grill this size so there's some things you might want to consider like a drip pan and I got to thinking about a drip pan and uh, I wasn't sure how I was going to handle that I went and stole one of my girlfriend's uh, 8 inch cake pans to try and it's a little bit too tall from top to bottom to fit between the heat deflector and the cooking rack so I ran up to the grocery store and found some of these uh, disposable aluminum pie pans. Uh, these measure about nine and a half inches from lip to lip and they're about a quarter of an inch th or one and a quarter inches thick and it fits perfectly. This is a perfect drip pan to use in that grill so that's what we're going to use because we're going to, you know how butts render out a lot of fat and collagen, you want to collect some of that. You don't want to let it all run down into the grill on a grill this size because if you compare the size of this grill, the Joe Jr. to the Classic for instance, us putting a 7 pound butt on this grill is probably equivalent to putting a 20 or 25 pound butt on the Classic. That's how much volume we're going to consume inside the grill of its available space with meat. So uh, enough about that. Uh, let's uh, get this butt prepped. Okay folks, I've got my Boston butt here. This butt weighs 7.2 pounds after trimming. This is the fat cap side. I've trimmed a good bit of the fat cap back on this one and then I weighed it. So we're, we're looking at 7.2 pounds. So I'm going to spread a little bit of yellow mustard, just a real thin layer of mustard on the outside of this guy. And then I'm going to shake on my pork rub and this is the same pork rub that I gave you guys the recipe for earlier. I'll put a link to this pork rub recipe here on the screen for that video and I will uh, put it in the video description. So I'm gonna get a good coat on here. We're gonna get it on the sides and on the back. So I will get this rub down and then we'll continue from there. Okay, now that I've got a good coat of rub on here, I'm going to wrap this guy in aluminum foil and we're going to toss it in the refrigerator and let it stay there overnight and we're going to come back in the morning and fire up the Joe Jr. and get cooking. Okay folks, I've got the Joe Jr. loaded up here with a pretty decent load of charcoal. I'm going to take one half of one of our Kamado Joe starter cubes and we're going to light it up and let our fire get going here. We're going to leave the lid open for a few minutes and then we'll be back as soon as this is going. Okay, we've got our fire started here. So I'm, I've laid in a couple of chunks of peach wood and I'm going to lay one more right here on top of the fire. And then we're going to set our heat deflector in and on top of my heat deflector I've got one of these disposable aluminum pie pans. It fits perfectly on here as a, as a drip pan. 
and we're going to need that with this Boston butt. And then I'm going to set our grill rack right in and let the grill come on up to temperature. And we're going to cook at about 250 degrees today. So we'll be back in just a few minutes to put this Boston butt on here. This thing does not take long at all to warm up. Okay, we've got our Joe almost up to temp here. So I'm going to open it up and we're going to set this uh, butt right up here in the middle of that grill. And I am not going to put a temperature probe in here at this point. I'm going to wait till I've got a little extra clearance. Uh, let this butt shrink up a good bit. I'm probably going to cook it for six hours or so before I come back and put the temperature probe in. So we're going to close this guy up and let it come back up to temp. And I'm going to show you how we're going to control the temperature on this. We're going to use our lower vent and we're going to probably put it at about oh a half an inch and leave it maybe I may shut it a little bit more than that and then we're going to leave that there for the entire cook we're going to control the rest of the cook from the top vent on the top vent I'm going to close the slider all the way and we're going to leave the daisy wheel section of that fully open until I get to 250 and if I need to adjust it from there we'll come back and make some adjustments okay we're right at an hour into this cook and I have the Joe Jr. Park right at 250 degrees it doesn't seem to be moving much I did tweak the top vent to where it's only about 50 percent open maybe slightly less so uh, now that this thing's settled in, I'm just going to let it go. I'm probably going to come back and look at it again in an hour or so to see if the temperature's moved any one way or the other. But all we'll do at this point is tweak the top daisy wheel, open or closed, if we need to raise or lower the temperature. So uh, I expect this thing, based on my test run, it's going to sit just where it is for a long time. So. Uh, once uh, I get to about the six hour mark, we're going to come back and put a temperature probe in it and uh, look at it from there. Okay, folks, we're about right at six hours into this cook and the Joe Jr. has been holding rock solid at 250 degrees. So we're going to take a peek. Man, that's looking really good. That looks outstanding. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it off the grill and wrap it in foil. Put it back on the grill. I'm going to put a temperature probe in it to monitor it from here on out. And we'll be back to have a look at this when it's finished up. Okay, folks, we are 8 hours and 15 minutes into this cook. And my internal meat probe is reading 197 on the uh, temperature of this meat. So I'm going to pull the probe out. We're going to take a look and check this and see if it's uh, ready to come off or not. Oh, I wish you could smell that. Man, that's smelling really phenomenal. What we're going to do here is we're going to test this for probe tenderness and see how it feels. It's uh, feeling pretty good, but I think we're probably going to leave it in there maybe just a few more minutes. Probably about 15 more minutes, and then we'll come back, take this guy off, and have a look at how much charcoal we've got left. Okay, folks, we are at 8 hours and 30 minutes, which is actually a little less time than I thought. It would take this butt to cook in here, but it is ready. And I'm going to lift this guy off. There's a lot of juice in this foil. So I'm going to set it aside. Then I'm going to take it inside and drain that juice out of the foil and rewrap it and rest it in my cooler for probably at least an hour before we come back to pull it. But before we do anything else, we're going to have a look at how much fuel is left inside the grill. 
I'm going to lift my grill grate off. Then we're going to lift out our heat deflector and set it aside. And let's see if I can get over there to show you how much we've got left in our fire box. There's a good bit of a uh, good bit of charcoal left in there. You can see how it's burned down the middle and there's still some out here. It's still all burning, but you know, I wouldn't hesitate to say that there's another 3 hours easy easily inside this grill, maybe even 4. So <laughs> tell you what I'll do, I will let it continue to run at 250 and We'll see how long it holds up there, and I'll report that here on the screen in the video as soon as I know how long it's run. So we're going to let that butt rest before we pull it apart, and then I'll meet you again in the kitchen. Okay, I've rested this guy for about two hours, and we're going to pull the bone loose here, and that's exactly what you want to see. That bone should come off clean just like that. I had one little piece stick up here at the top but that's a good sign of a good cook toss that bone aside and we'll just start tearing into this butt tear it apart man it's just coming right apart look at that that smells outstanding have a little taste of that a little piece here off the edge a little bit of that bark on it See that smoke ring got a nice fairly deep smoke ring on that guy let's have a bite hmm that's really good this is as good as any so I think the uh, Joe Jr.'s about proved itself. Low and slow cooking, it can handle it. I'm going to pull this meat apart, vacuum seal it, and uh, put it away. Until next time, this is John Setzler with Kamado Joe Cooking Channel.